The firms who apply for names for pharmaceutical products or for medicines, uh, cough juices or painkillers or medicines against hypertension, uh, for hypertension, um, tend to apply for more than one name for these, so for more than one trademark for these products. And they would do this because they might be afraid that um, a regulator who's trying to make sure that the name of this particular medicine doesn't confuse the patients um, <clears throat> might be strict and might say that a particular trademark that the firm wants to use to, to protect its uh, pharmaceutical product is too similar to another trademark that's already in use. And so what the uh, what the applicant will do is they will choose a whole set of names, let's say five or eight names, and uh, register all of these in the trademark office. And then they will take all eight names to the medical regulator, and the medical reg regulator will test every single one of those, and then the medical regulator may just approve two or three of them. And then the, pharmaceut the pharmaceutical company at the end of all of this will choose one of these names to protect its medicine. From the perspective of the person looking at the trademark register, the problem is that there are another seven or another five or another six trademarks that that firm also applied for for that product that it's not going to use. And these trademarks, to some extent, are no longer available to other firms, and potentially similar trademarks are not available to other firms. And that makes it expensive for these other firms to look for uh, their own names. And that's really what I'm trying to understand, whether this, this particular phenomenon is widespread and whether it's important. If you look at European enlargement as a particular experiment where um, the European Union was enlarged by 10 countries and as a consequence the probability of convincing a medical regulator that a particular name is unproblematic um, becomes much smaller, it's much more difficult to do that in the new regulatory environment, um, I would expect to see the pharmaceutical firms for, to apply for more names at the same time. And so what I'm trying to see empirically is whether this is really true. And then once I see the signal, which is, is the case in this particular piece of research, I'm trying to find out whether um, extrapolating from the signal I'm seeing, I can claim that the problem is very large and we've got a lot of clutter on the uh, register or it's not very large. Mm -hmm. And the last piece of the work is really then to try and figure out, well, what are the costs associated with creating all these surplus marks? And the bottom line is that it's quite a significant sum uh, that's spent on creating surplus marks, but it's not a sum which is so huge that it's a first order problem for this particular industry. So this particular research, I think, is just going to help to try and understand what procedures uh, the people who run trademark offices should adopt in order to make it most efficient for the users uh, to use this particular type of IP protection. Yeah. So the, the underlying question really is, can we make it cheaper for applicants to find the names that they need to protect their products? This paper is obviously specific to a very uh, um, clear industry context, which is the pharmaceutical industry. Um, but it has motivated me to think that it would be interesting to try and understand the filing behavior of companies that use multiple uh, trademark jurisdictions more widely. So companies that are multinational that would be going to many, many different countries. Because you could argue that they face uh, quite similar problems in the sense that uh, they will often want to have the same name for their product across the world and the probability that that particular name is going to survive um, the, um, the procedures that are active in, in, let's say, Uruguay and Paraguay and Canada and the United States, in Russia and Asia, you know, um, is not so high. So again, the companies are likely to pursue a strategy where they're going to insure themselves by going for multiple applications. And it would be very interesting to try and understand what that means for all of these trademark systems. So do we have a lot of surplus trademarks that are being created in this way?